What's up guys? Today I'm making a quick video about 64-bit computing. So you hear this term all the time, but it's good to get a little bit of a deeper understanding of what it really means. Why does the website ask you if you want to download the 64-bit version or the 32-bit version? Everyone says 64-bit's better than 32-bit, but why is it better? All right. So the first thing to know about 64-bit computing is that it comes in two parts. Two parts. So the first part is the processor, and the second part is the software. A processor can be either 32-bit capable or 64-bit capable, and software can also be 32-bit or 64-bit. So how do you mix and match these two things? So the one major point to understand is that a 32-bit processor can only run 32-bit software. On the other hand, a 64-bit processor can usually run both 32-bit programs and 64-bit programs. This doesn't happen very often anymore, but normally when you go to a website and download a piece of software, it usually asks you, do you want the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version? The reason why it asks is if you only have a 32-bit processor, you're just not going to be able to run the 64-bit version of the software, so you shouldn't download it. So the best combination to have is a 64-bit processor and 64-bit software. That's the best combo. So we all know that 64-bit is better, but let's just go over why it's better. It's almost common knowledge now that when you're using a 32-bit processor with 32-bit operating system, you're limited to only 4 gigs of RAM or memory. So I'm not going to get into too much detail about why 32 bits can only address 4 gigabytes of memory, but just accept it for now, and that's one of the major limitations of only 32-bit architectures. So the first and really important benefit of 64-bit computing is that we can have more memory than 4 gigabytes. That's the first, but not only, benefit. The other core benefit of 64-bit computing is performance. I'm gonna get a little bit technical here, so just try to stick with me for a little bit. I'll do my best. There's one particular way in which computers kind of measure size, and that thing is called a word. It's not a real word like dog, cat. It's more like a computer word, and it always has a fixed size. So everything inside a computer is relative to this really fundamental word size. A number might be one word, or a really big number could be two words. One of the cool benefits of 64-bit is that normally that default word size doubles. So why exactly is having a larger word size better for performance? Well, if I could put it into one sentence, it would probably just be this. With bigger words, you can add bigger numbers together. And when you can add bigger numbers together, you can do more computations and things get more efficient. So 64-bit isn't really a new thing. It's been in desktop computers for a really, really long time. The area where 64-bit is really new is in mobile devices. The only 64-bit processor out right now in a phone is the iPhone 5S. That's the only one right now. And probably Android phones are gonna come out soon. So let's just reiterate some of the important points from before. 64-bit software can only run on a 64-bit processor. And also to reiterate, if you only have a 32-bit processor, you can only run 32-bit software. So really ingrain those points in your head and then also remember more memory can be addressed and higher performance. And so that's it for today and I'm just going to wrap it up there. Sorry I didn't go into too much core details behind some of the stuff I talked about, but I just wanted to give a quick overview of some 64-bit fundamentals since it's usually a little bit hazy with people. If you could take away anything from this video, it's this. There's always two parts when someone says 64-bit. It's software part and a processor part, and they have to work together if you want the big bucks. The big, what does that mean? Stupid. 